All right, guys, uh, Brian Reyes here uh, from Eman Games, and I'm here at ARG Las Vegas, and uh, I managed to top this event. I unfortunately lost in top eight. Um, but yeah, overall, it was a good event. Uh, besides the matches that I lost, uh, I decided to play Sky Striker for this event because I expected Salomon Grade to be very popular for this event since the deck just came out a few days ago. And I expected people to want to play that deck for this event. And I think Sky Striker has like a super easy matchup versus that deck. Uh, like granted, I did lose to Salomon Grade in top eight, but the two times that I lost to Salomon Grade this weekend, uh, I bricked twice and I got Imperial Order the 200 times. So it, the losses were really out of my control, but every time that I got to play the, my deck, uh, Salomon Grade is just super free. Um, so, and I also didn't expect much Thunder or combo for this event because I knew it was going to be rather small. Uh, and I, thankfully my theory was right. I played against mainly mainly control decks on uh, slow decks that Sky Striker just thrives uh, versus. So uh, yeah, here's my deck. So for the standard stuff, you know, I picked three Ray, uh, three Ash, and I was back and forth on this, but in the end I decided to main deck three Effect Veiler. Um, so I was thinking of main decking a much more heavy uh, main deck for like Rogue and like instead of uh, three Effect Veilers, I was gonna do two Heavy Storm Dusters and one Galaxy Cyclone. But in the end, I decided to just main deck three Effect Veiler, not only because they have the generic utility versus combo, but even versus like the non-combo decks where this card isn't necessarily like insane versus, it's still very solid. Like versus Salaman Greek, this card is actually still pretty all right. Uh, versus Guru, it can be pretty okay. Versus the Mirror, it can be all right. Like even in the matchups where you necessarily don't want to have this card in, uh, it's not that bad. And at worst, you can always side out and it's just super generic. And I also decided to play Effect Veiler over uh, Impermanence uh, because I think Impermanence is just like super bad uh, because everybody that plays against Sky Striker is gonna side in back row removal and stuff and Impermanence just loses to back row removal while Effect Veiler doesn't. And besides Salaman Great, uh, people aren't really playing Called by the Grave. So Effect Veiler has like, there's like no reason not to play Effect Veiler. Um, yeah, and also I'll get to it, but I also decided to main deck Shared Ride and you can just draw into this with Shared Ride and use it. Uh, I really like the, I really like the Effect Veiler. I think this card's super good. Um, and then lastly for the two hand traps inside the main deck, uh, two Ghost Starter. Versus Salaman Greek, this card is pretty bad, but I wanted that extra help versus the mirror because sometimes the mirror can be a little difficult. And if you ogre multi roll, uh, it's usually really good for you. Um, and I, I think it's very subpar versus the combo decks that are out right now. But like I said, I didn't expect much uh, combo for this event, and I expected more control decks. And I think ogre is very decent versus control decks that aren't Salaman Greek. So I was happy with the ogre, even though like I never drew it this event. But in theory, uh, ogre was correct. That's it for the monsters. Uh, for the spells, I decided to do a 3 Engage, 3 Anchor, 3 multi roll, 3 Area 0. I still see people play 2 and 2, but if I could play 2 and 2, I would, but the fact is that this deck bricks like more than it should. Uh, I bricked like 6 times this event, and therefore you just want to maximi maximize on these cards because they uh, lessen your chance of bricking. And especially multi roll, you definitely want to play three because this is the blowout in the mirror. Uh, versus Salaman Great, this is actually just the best card. This card is so good against that deck. And also versus Thunder, this card really helps because it gets an extra spell in grade. Um, so I, th I definitely think three and three is correct. Uh, for the remaining Sky Striker spells, I decided to still play two Eco Booster. A lot of people play one, but I think in grind games, the second one comes up all the time uh, because it, when you're just playing one, uh, there's often times where you just need to reset it with multi roll. And once you lose it after that, you're out of Eco Booster for the rest of the match. And I didn't want to be having to rely on just one booster for the, my, the rest of my uh, for the rest of the tournament. So I decided to play two, uh, and also just because this card's like obviously insane versus the mirror, uh, I'm really happy I played two. I think Eco Booster is just so good. Uh, one Hornet drones, obviously. Shark Cannon. This card's just. I think this card is so good right now, especially versus Salaman Great. This card's uh, busted. And then one Afterburners. Uh, no Hercules base because. I used to like that card, but I learned how to play without it, so I think it's fine. I think Jamming Waves has uh, merit in this meta, because I think against Salaman Great, a lot of the times they're gonna end one counter trap and something else, and Jamming Waves being the force out either the counter trap or the other set that they have and just having to play through the counter trap is pretty good. But my deck was super tight, it was already at 41 that I just didn't have space for Jamming Waves, but I can definitely see uh, Jamming Waves having merit for this format, but no Jamming Waves in my deck. Uh, main deck three twin twister. This is pretty staple. This card's insane. Um, for this event, I decided to main deck uh, three shared ride. So 
a lot of people like versus combo obviously is card if you go second it's god awful but the thing so versus the mirror is card is a super blowout versus salomon great if they don't ash this then most of the times it'll net you two to three cards which is really really good uh, but even versus uh danger thunder i drew six cards versus uh off of a guy when i activated this when i went first i think this card is just super good and it's super versatile uh, when you go first even versus like the decks where it's not necessarily the best most of the times it'll still net you a one for one plus it'll get you a spell engrave uh i think it was fine in the main deck i don't know if i'd play this in the main again but uh for this event i think it was fine uh, i really liked it for this event but i can see not main decking it for a bigger event uh two terraforming to for your consistency purposes uh two foolish goods metaphors fusion my teammate Alberto has been playing three of this a lot, and I do like three, uh, just because it's super good versus Thunder, and just in general, just in general, this card when you have like a starter is really really good. But like I said, my deck is just super tight that I couldn't find the third one. But I do see like playing, oh, uh, like being able to play three because this card is just so busted. Uh, Metaphors Fusion. I actually just drew this card way more than I'd like to with no field spell, with no multi roll, and no twin. But it's it's good when you do have one of those three cards. And the last two spells is just one Rota and one Upstart. Even though it's 41 cards, uh, the thing is that this card just gets value in this deck because it's an extra spell engrave. So it's fine playing this in 41. Uh, that's it for my main deck. Uh, for my extra deck, it's pretty standard. Uh, triple Gagari, Triple Shizuku. Uh, I still decided to do three Hayate. I've seen people doing like two and two, two and two Kaina or two and one Kaina, but I didn't feel like the extra extra deck sp spots that people relegate uh, when they don't play as, as many of these uh, was that necessary. Um, so I was, ha I was I was happy with playing three. I'm also happy with playing two because in grind games this comes up, especially versus con uh, combo decks. And I didn't think I needed cards like Clara and Rushka, especially since Alter guys just completely fell out of the meta. Um, I didn't feel like I needed triple burst or Ningirsu or top logic bomber. And I think in the long run. Having more Sky Striker links in your extra deck is going to benefit you more than having generic links. Um, so I was very happy with this ratio. In the last links I played with Bora Sword. This card is so good in this deck. Uh, there were times where I wanted to also play Bora Load, but just I just didn't have any space. But this card is just great in this deck. Uh, and then Unicorn, Phoenix for the generic stuff. And then I played the Starving Venom because I sided a Super Poly. And that's it for my extra deck. Uh, lastly, for my side deck. I cited uh, three Panker Tops. It's just so generically good versus uh, pretty much every single deck in the meta. And the fact that this uh, has the same interaction that uh, the Field Spell and Ray does. Uh, uh, so if you have Field Spell and this, it works just like you have Field Spell and Ray. So that's like an extra benefit of this. You can also just multi roll target this, chain this, pop something, and then you get a free multi roll. Uh, so Panker Tops is just so busted. Uh, I decided to side deck three Droll. Uh, I don't think main decking this card in Sky Striker is all that great. But in the side deck, you just need the extra draw versus the combo decks, especially danger decks. Uh, I, danger decks are super good against Sky Striker, but the, if you can just draw them at the appropriate time, uh, it'll make sure that you don't die, and it'll make sure that next turn you just overwhelm them with advantage, and then you should be able to win that game. Uh, every time I had draw post side versus combo decks, it was super insane, and I won most of those matches. So really happy I decided to draw. Uh, I decided the one super poly just because it's gonna give me a blowout. Uh, I cited two Storm Duster, like I said earlier, I, re I was considering main decking these, um, but uh, it was fine It was fine in the side deck. I didn't really draw this card all that much, and the times I did draw this card, it was unfortunately a brick. Uh, I don't I don't know, I don't think versus Salomon Greek, this card is all that great. Uh, I didn't like it that much when I, when I cited it in, but versus everything else, like versus Guru, versus the Mirror, uh, versus like Alter Geist, and all those type of decks, this card's insane, so you still have to play this card, I think. And so for my last six traps, uh, I felt like I needed an edge versus the combo decks when I went first, so I decided like I was in between uh, like solemn strikes or maybe more hand traps, but in the end I decided to just uh, play floodgates. So I decided to play three mind drain and three summon limit. So summon limit is obviously just like the best floodgate right now. If you summon limit them, mostly summon two monsters, uh, you should always win because if you get to summon two monsters on your turn. It's, one of them is always going to be Kagari, and the other one doesn't even matter because just Kagari is enough to win you the game. So Summon Limit is obviously super good. And this Mind Drain is the only questionable one. Uh, I was back and forth between Mind Drain and There Can Be Only One because There Can Be Only One uh, is also super good versus Salomon Green. But the problem with There Can Be Only One, I, I think, is that it also locks you out of your extra deck. 
And there were times in testing where I had there can be only one versus decks like Thunder and decks like Salamon Great um, that I still happened to lose just because I was locked out of my own extra deck and I couldn't get back in the game. So in the end, I just decided on Mind Drain specifically for danger decks, uh, including Thunder, just because if you shut them off from being able to activate any hand effects, dangers, thun uh, th or even thunders, uh, you should win that match 100%. So. Uh, I never, I actually just never drew these. It was super unfortunate that I never drew these when I went first. But the theory behind this card, I really like. Uh, so I'm, ha I'm so happy I played this, even though like I just never saw it. Uh, but yeah, that's my deck. Like I said, it's unfortunate that I lost in top eight, but I'm really happy that well, our tried and true one of our boys, Francisco Alcaraz, managed to win it. Uh, so shout outs, obviously got a shout out to Team Eman Games. You already know, number one team in the world. Uh, shout outs to people like Blue Master, Christian, uh, and people uh, that helped me with theorizing for this uh, on building up my deck and stuff. And uh, obviously, shout out to Team Big Dog, Caesar, and then three of us top. So, myself, Francisco, the winner, obviously, and our boy Nuko playing ABC. Uh, and obviously, shout out to uh, Guzman Remigio. And then, lastly, I want to shout out some people that have borrowed cards. Shout out to uh, Noah Bagelman, Walter Jewel, thank you for letting us borrow cards. And obviously, our boy Alfredo, uh, Alberto. Sorry. <laughs> Shout out to our boy Alberto from Frank's. Uh, please make sure to check out his booth, Booth 912. He always hooks us up, and you know we really appreciate you. Uh, but yeah, thanks guys.